On the previous video, I introduced five essential systems that you need to create in order to make RPG games in Godot Engine. And some people didn't understand that, so I got some comments like this one and this other one here, telling that I should re retitle the video not being about Godot Engine, right? But this, I understand, these people are new to the channel, they probably never saw my face on their life. So they don't know that I make games on Godot Engine and they could expect that I would explain how these systems can be implemented in Godot Engine on future videos. And this one is one of them. In this video, we're going to talk about how we can implement the interaction system. The system that the first system that I introduced on this other video. On this video, we are going to understand what is an interaction system, why it is important to have it on your specific RPG, and how we can implement it on Godot Engine using the product that I have on my course. By the way, if you want to enroll for the course, the link will be in the description. I will talk about this later in this video. But let's get started. So, the problem that we currently have here is that I have this very simple scene and here on the level, I have this headquarter. And if we go into this headquarter scene, we can see that I have this inter interaction panel in which the player can choose if they want to repair the spaceship, if they want to uh, save the game, or oh, if they want to load the game, or if they want to save the game. By the way, if you want to know how you can make a saving system, I'm going to make a video about that as well so if this video is already recorded i'll put it on the card on the recommended on the recommendation card otherwise subscribe to the channel and wait a little bit because i will create this video but i digress what we have here also is that we have these uh, animations telling the player that there is an interaction available within the with this specific object so it displays the name of the object an interaction aura as i like to call and uh, the other animation hides both of these uh, uh, visual elements of these graphic elements right but nothing happens in the game itself because well there is nothing triggering this behavior so if i get close to this headquarter nothing happens right so uh, let me embed this scene here okay so what we are going to do here is to create the interaction system so let's understand what the interaction system is think about it as a two ways system where we have a, an active object and, and a passive object the active object looks for the, this passive object trying to identify if this passive object is within its boundary, boundaries, right? So we can use an area 2D for that because the area 2D we can create with collision shapes, we can create an area that will detect when another area 2D gets inside this area and we can handle that. So this part of the system is already uh, built for us. The next thing that this system needs to check for is if this area that is within uh, this that that is overlapping the interaction the active element uh, can or can't interact with it. So for that we are going to isolate this system, preventing that it's going to interact with other systems. So in this case we have the physics system running on the background, and we need to prevent that this specific area interact with other areas to these. And for that we are going to create a specific physics layer for interactions next on after these two areas are overlapping each other we need to check if the player press the interaction button right because some interactions don't trigger as soon as players are close to them so for instance if we get close to an npc we need to press an interaction key in order to trigger the interaction with this npc right so for instance if we want them to if we want to speak with them to trigger a dialogue by the way dialogue is going to be another video so subscribe to the channel to get notified when i release the video about the the dialogue system then after we check if the player press or didn't press the interaction button the interact input action we need to communicate to relevant to interest objects that the player interact with this specific area so 
the the per the main purpose of this system is to encapsulate the interaction logic so it's not going to be concerned about what happens after the player interacts with the system the only responsibility of this system is to trigger an interaction so what happens afterward is on the object that is used in this interactive area to the um, side so the first thing that we are going to do let's get back here is to create such elements so as i said we have two components on this system we have the passive component which we are going to call interaction area 2d this area 2d is going to be on the player's uh, avatar so in my case on my spaceship and it doesn't have any code the real code the logic is on the active element which we are going to call the interactive area 2d so let's get started we are going to start by opening the project tab, project settings, and creating this physics layer that I just talked about. Telling that, well, we already have here, We can you can choose whatever um, layer you want. I already have the first layer set to the environment, the second layer set to combat. By the way, if you want to know how you can create a combat system with hit and hurt boxes, I would recommend you to watch this video. And I'm going to call the third layer the interaction layer. So I'm going to close it and then I, I'm going to start with the passive component so that we can understand what it does and it's going to be the mirror of the interactive area 2D which is the active component. So I'm going to create a, an area 2D. This, uh, the same logic works for 3D, okay? So if you want to implement the same system on 3D games, just use the con counterpart on 3D. So in this case, the area, oops, the area 3D, 3D right here. So instead of the area 2D, use the area 3D. And since this is the passive component, so I'm going to call it interaction area 2D, this is going to be the monitorable component. It's not going to monitor anything, but other elements will monitor it. So we are going to toggle off the monitoring, monitoring. And down here on the collision, we are going to disable all the layers and we have both the collision layer and the collision mask. And if you want to understand how collision layers and collision masks work, I'm going to recommend you to watch this video. It's a little bit old, but the, the, the logic is still the same. This didn't change on, uh, on newer Grot engine versions, so I recommend you to watch it so you understand what the collisions uh, layer and mask do. But back here, just to summarize everything, the collision layer is where this object is within and the collision mask is where this object looks for collisions, okay? So in this case, this is the object that is within a given collision layer. It doesn't check for any collisions because, again, this is the passive component of the system. So I'm going to set the collision layer to the third one, which is the interaction layer that we are going to use. And I'm going to save it. Uh, let's create a folder for systems. I'm going to create the folder for the interaction system here. I'm going to save it with capital D because I don't like the lowercase d. Okay, so this is our component. This is the passive component. We can already open the player scene and add it as a child of the spaceship. So, interaction, error to D. And I'm going to set up the collision uh, shape, so collision shape, which is going, I like to uh, call code my system, so the interaction system is green, so I'm going to change the color of this collision shape, and I'm going to use a circle 2D for this one. So that's it, we already set up our player for interactions. Next up, we are going to create the interactive error to the which is the active component of our system so i'm going to start with an error to the and since this is the counterpart of the system what we are going to do is to disable the monitorable uh boolean here so we are going to disable this one and on the collision uh layers and mask we are going to disable the collision layer and only enable the collision mask on the respective layer for interactions, which in my case is the third one. So this one, I'm going to save it 
as inter I'm going to rename it to interactive interactive R2D and save it alongside with the interaction R2D. So the next thing that we are going to do is to finally work with the logic itself. So I'm going to add a script, save it as interactive R2D, create, and I'm going to give it a class name, interactive R2D. And the first thing that we are going to do is to export a variable that is going to allow us to set the proper interaction action if we want to change the default one so by default it's going to be called interact um interact so if you want to change this interactive uh this interaction input action you can go to project project settings input map in my case i already have this interact which is a bundle of a group of some keys and the joypad button as well so we have the e f and c key being mapped to this action but you can set up however you want just remember the name of this input action in my case is, is interact so you can use right here so interact input action it's going to be by default interact okay the next thing that we are going to do is to connect the area entered and the area exited signals to this interactive area 2d so that we can rely on the building uh, overlapping system to trigger our next events. So in area entered, area exited. And what we are going to do here is to enable and disable the unhandled input processing based on whether the player is within this, this specific interactive area 2D or not. Why are we going to do that? Because if we don't enable and disable the unhandled input processing, whenever the player presses the input, the interact area, the interact input action, it's going to trigger the interact logic on every other interactive area to these. So to prevent that, we are going to constrain them, making so that they will only process inputs if the they detect that the interaction area to the is overlapping with it. So let's go come back here. Let's create some signals to communicate that these three events happened. The player, it, it has an interaction available. The interaction is not available anymore, so it's unavailable. And the player interacted. So signal, interaction available, interaction unavailable. Oops, let me copy paste that. Unavailable and interaction or interacted. Okay, so this is where our system is going to output. This is where our system is going to communicate to other objects that the respective goal of the system was achieved. It detect an interaction within its boundaries. So to do that, the first thing that we are going to set up is on the ready callback, we are going to turn off the unhandled input exactly to prevent that every instance of the interactive area to the uh, start processing inputs. So by default, they will start not processing any inputs. So set unhandled input false. And on the unhandled, inside the unhandled input logic, so unhandled input, we're going to check if event is action pressed. This action right here, so I have a typo. So let's change that. If this happened, we're going to emit the interacted signal. Interacted, interacted dot emit. Is this correct? Inter okay, so interacted. Let's change that. Okay, next up, based on whether the player got inside this error or exited this error, we're going to turn this input process handling on or off. So let's do that. It's going to be on when players entered and off when players exit this area. And right uh, down here, we can also emit these both signals respectively. 
so interaction available dot emit interaction unavailable dot emit and that's it we already have our input uh, our interaction system on place next up we are going to use this uh th this error this interactive error 2d on the interactive object that we want to, on the object that we want to turn interactive so as you can see this is very abstract so this allows us to make anything any object in our game world an interactive object just by instancing this class inside of them so let's do that i'm going to come back to the headquarter this is where we have our interactions so i'm going to add the interactive error 2d as a child and i'm going to add this collision shape and i'm going to use a circle shape set this to green and it will be right about here so save and well what we are going to do now is to connect this interaction available and unavailable signals on this animation player so that it plays the height interface and the display interface animations accordingly so let's do that interaction available so animation animation player is this one right here okay so we are going to connect it to the play method and we are going to pass an extra argument telling it to play the display interface interface animation and when the interaction is not available anymore what is it here we are going to play the hide interface interface and when we uh, press the interacted button we are going to basically show this interaction panel right here so uh, we can connect it directly to this show method so this is what's going to happen okay so let's save and test it now just let me just make sure that yeah so we have this volume right about here just so we don't get <laughs> that so let's try this out and if i press there we have it the interaction panel and if i press again the interaction panel disappear because we are toggling it on and off and if i get outside of the interaction area 2d interactive area 2d the interface disappears and that's it that's how you make an interaction system i hope that this <laughs> help those people that require that we have an a practical implementation of the systems that i presented on the previous video in good engine uh, this is how we can implement such system inside of Google, especially on this specific project which by the way is part of my Godot Adventure Essentials course, a course that's going to teach you how you can make an adventure game in five days. Each day you learn how to make a new system and how you can implement this system inside of this specific project that we are working with in the course. You will also get access to our exclusive community so you can interact with me and other members of the community, which by the way, we are already having some feedback on the course, some great feedback. One of them is exactly about this uh, interactive si interaction system, which I'm reworking on the course class so that we can improve the quality of each class. But that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Keep developing and until the next one. See you there.